Well, what's up, YouTube family? Welcome back to another video. And before we start this video, we want to take time to thank you guys for your continual support of the channel. We drop videos every Friday morning, and we hope that the videos have been encouraging you. We hope that the videos has been blessing you. Um, and so continue to like. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Drop those comments below. We appreciate the feedback. It really encourages us to see that. Also, if you want to support the channel, the links to our website and our cash app are in the description. Also, if you want to book me for monthly coaching sessions where you can meet with me two times per month via Zoom, that link is in the description as well. A special thank you to everyone who has signed up to join that coaching, coaching group. We're doing the work. We appreciate it, guys. Let's get into the message this morning. I want to talk about how to have faith when things are hard. How to have faith when things are hard. You know, and the story that I want to tag this morning is the story of uh, Mary and Joseph and how they had to have faith through a difficult situation. And so I think it's paramount and, you know, I, I think it's tantamount that we understand that it is easy to have faith when things are good. But it is more challenging to have faith when things are bad, right? And so I believe the true measure of faith is that. How do I respond to adversity? You know, Jesus talks about how in this life we will have trials and tribulations. But he said, be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. And so Jesus never tells us. He actually promises persecution. He, he actually tells us that we will have trials. But he tells us to take peace in the fact that we're not going through that trial alone. And so with Joseph and Mary, this story is interesting because Mary is young and, 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 and Joseph is younger. And, you know, Jesus is coming to the earth and God decides to use a virgin by the name of Mary. So God tells Mary, you're going to have a son and I want you to name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. And so before we get into the story deeply, first, I think it's, it's, it's um, vital for us to point out the fact that Jesus comes to earth in order to sympathize with us because as long as he in heaven, um, he really can't sympathize to the point that he wanted to when it came to what we really face, like, because he's in heaven. But when he comes into the flesh, now he knows what it feels like to not have your family accept you. Because Jesus said, I came to my own and my own received me not. I know what it feels like to have a close friend die because when Lazarus died, Jesus wept. I know what it feels like to be lied on because the Pharisees did that to me. I know what it feels like to give somebody your trust and they betray you because I had a guy by the name of Judas who walked with me and who saw me do miracles and still betrayed me. So Hebrews 4 talks about how we are dealing with a high priest who can sympathize with our weaknesses. He he was tempted in every way. So he understands what frustration feels like. He, he understands what brokenness feels like. So yes, his primary objective was to save us from our sins. But one of the secondary objectives to me is he wanted to feel what we felt. He wanted to know um, in an intimate way what we went through. And so that was part of why he came as Mary, you're going to have a child even though you're a virgin. Now, this is how she had to have faith when things are hard. This is not humanly possible. This is not biologically possible to have a kid when you haven't been intimate with anyone. And so she had to have faith even when it was hard to believe that that was possible. And, and that's the thing about faith. Faith is not understanding everything God is doing. Faith is just trusting what God is doing. Hebrews talks about how faith is the substance of what we hope for. And it is my evidence of what I don't see. So even though I can't see how I can be a virgin and still become pregnant, my faith says that it is possible because God said it. And so that is the thing about faith. Faith is stepping out when you don't have all the details. You know, when Peter got out of the boat to walk on the water, 
he didn't have to have the details. Jesus said, come, come towards me. And Peter got out of the boat because true faith is sometimes when I step out not knowing all of the details because Jesus didn't have to say, okay, Peter, I'm going to suspend gravity. I'm going to call, I'm going to stop the wind. No, Peter just went forward not knowing. And so sometimes people are uh, paralyzed by, you know, the term paralysis of analysis where we analyze so long, but faith sometimes is saying, I'm going to step out even when I don't understand how every part of this is going to work out. Now, there's a fine line between faith and foolishness. I believe in using wisdom when you're stepping out, but you have to understand something by faith. You won't know everything because his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are above our thoughts, which means that he's smarter than us. And whenever a person is smarter than you, you would never understand everything they're doing. Like you ever was in school and somebody was smarter than you in a particular subject, they can talk about it, they can explain it, and you might not understand what they're talking about, but you know they're getting you to the right answer, right? Because if they're smarter than me, I don't have to understand how they got to the answer, but I know the answer is right. So that that is what faith is. Mary had to have faith in Joseph because put yourself in Joseph's shoes, brothers, where you're, the person you are engaged to comes to you and says that they are pregnant and you know you haven't slept with them and not only i'm pregnant but god did it right <laughs> so this is why a marriage has to be built on spirituality because in the flesh a person would never understand this but they believe god and they trust god even when it's hard but they had to do three things they have to wait on the promise to come to pass so i want to point out three things that we have to do while we wait on god's promise First of all, don't worry while we wait. Matthew chapter 6 talks about how we shouldn't worry about what we eat, drink, or wear because the Father knows that we need these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all them things shall be added. So while I'm waiting on whatever promise God has given me, I'm waiting with a sense of anticipation, but not a sense of frustration or not a sense of uh, anxiousness because I'm waiting knowing that God knows the right time. Time is so important, man, because you can always make more money, but you can't get your time. While you are waiting, do not worry because that promise that God has told you will come to pass. See, because when I worry, it magnifies my problems. But when I have faith, it magnifies God. So worry does not move God but faith does. And so while we're waiting, while Mary and Joseph had to wait, they had to wait with this sense of expectation, knowing that this angel told me that Jesus is coming and I'm going to bear him as my son. So while I'm waiting, I'm not going to worry. I'm going to wait with a sense of peace and knowing that God is in control. And so God, I mean, let's just be honest. He always moves slower than we want him <laughs> to, right? But one thing about Jesus that I see in the text, in the text when I read the Gospels, is that Jesus was never in a hurry. Why? Because when you know you got all power, you don't have to be rushed. Because, so that's why when Lazarus died, the Bible said it took Jesus four days to get there. And when Jesus got there, Mary and Martha said, "Hey, he gone. He in the grave. He he he's in the grave. It's too late." Jesus move on his own timetable because when you know you got all power. Even if it looked like I'm showing up late, I still can raise him. See, we panic because our power is limited, but Jesus sometimes moves slower than us because he knows he got all power. And when you got all power, it's nothing you can't do because when he got up out of the grave, he didn't come up with some power. Yeah, he came up with all power. So don't worry while you wait. Second thing we must do, we must work while we are waiting. See, while we are waiting, waiting when we're waiting, we're not waiting with a passive and a and like uh apathetic perspective no we're working while we waiting and 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 that's the thing faith is biblical but so is work faith without work is dead and so whenever you want to see god's god's original intent you always go back to the beginning and the book of beginnings is genesis and we see that in the beginning God gives Adam a job before he gives Adam a woman. Like work is a biblical thing. Proverbs talks about how the diligent hand will make you rich. And, and, and Proverbs says a lot of things against laziness. And so people don't really see laziness as a sin, but it really is. And so 
While we're waiting, we, we're not going to worry while we're waiting. We're going to work while we wait. And lastly, we're going to worship while we wait. While we're waiting, I think God is testing to see, can they praise me when things are not good? Can they be grateful when it looked like it's nothing to be grateful for in their life? And so while we're waiting, we still have to thank God. You know, in the book of Thessalonians, it, it talks about how it is God's will for us to be thankful in every situation. And so having a grateful heart is harder to do when things are bad in your life, but it's easier to do when things are good in your life. So the three things that I feel like we should do while we're waiting on our promise is uh, work while we wait, don't worry while we wait, and worship while we wait. Because if we do those three things and we see those three principles in Mary and Joseph's life, the Messiah is going to come through them, but they have to continue to wait on it because it did not come right away. A whole process of things had to happen in order for Jesus to be born. And another interesting thing about this story is that the angel that was talking to Mary said something uh, very powerful. Um, to Mary because Mary was having a hard time when the angel came to her. She like, man, how in the world am I gonna have a baby? You know, when I'm a when I'm a virgin, how is this gonna work? This 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 seems impossible. And the angel said something that was so powerful. The angel said, you know, your cousin Elizabeth, she is six months pregnant. And, and everybody said that she would never conceive, but look at her now. So in other words, the angel was saying, if God did it for her, God can do it for you. And so that's the thing. When God let us see people doing what we want to do and they come in our circle, it's not to invoke jealousy or for us to start hating. It's for us to say, you know what? God has no respect to person. So if he did it for them, he can do it for me. And so... That's kind of the thing like that I want to close with this morning is that, man, it takes work sometimes. You know, I heard a powerful quote by Michael Phelps, who is like the all-time greatest swimmer and Olympian. And he was like, everybody want to be an Olympian until they have to do what an Olympian has to do. And so understand that it takes faith, but it takes work and it takes sacrifice. But I believe that that we can have faith when things are hard. And that's the true test of faith. And I want to encourage you because maybe you're going through a hard situation right now. And you need to know that this when faith is needed in these times. Not necessarily when things are good. Faith is needed when tribulations come and when trials come. And so Jesus was eventually born because Mary and Joseph had faith when things um, were hard. And, it, and I was reading this powerful thing in this book about how all these thousands of oxen were killed, um, you know, in the Old Testament when they had the sacrificial system. But it only took three quarts of blood from Jesus' body to buy us back. And so thank God that they had faith in a hard time. And because they had faith when things were hard, we are the recipients of salvation. I want to encourage you guys, keep your head up. And I know it gets hard and I know it's not easy, but your faith is going to get you through it. Have an awesome day, guys.